Hi, welcome to IndyCar on the 9th of April 2019. I'm Gordon Ross. Today we hear that Mrs May is planning to visit uh, Angela Merkel today, I believe, in Germany. She's flying out to Berlin today to speak to the German Chancellor about um, extending the delay uh, for Mrs May to organise, uh, well, basically to make sure that the British Parliament finally approves some kind of Brexit deal. Mrs May has said that she wants to extend uh, the process of Article 50 by, well, until, as far as I understand it at the moment, around the 30th of June. Originally it was the 22nd of May, but this extension to the 30th of June will take us right past the European uh, parliamentary elections, which means that we may have to field candidates in a European parliamentary election. Now, what will happen in Europe is anybody's guess, but it's unlikely that the European Union will be too fussed about another short delay. You know, even one into May uh, it might be perfectly OK with them. And it's becoming more and more obvious by the day that the, the European Union's original strategy of giving us one deal only and giving us until the 29th of March to decide on it seems to have backfired. The delays are coming thick and fast now. And not only the delays, but the, the readiness of the European Union to keep delaying things to make it easier for the UK uh, seems to just keep going on and on. And the talk this morning now is that the European Union will perhaps not grant just a short extension, but a much longer one of up to a year, taking us all the way through to March or April 2020 which is a hell of a lot longer. I mean, we're talking four and a half years after the original vote to leave the European Union before anything might actually happen. So everything is beginning to look further and further away. The can has not just been kicked down the road, it's been catapulted down the road by a giant trebuchet into the, the beginning of next year. Uh, and we're now faced with this, uh, the, the prospect of this dragging on indefinitely. <coughs> and... I've also heard today from various news sources that Jaguar Land Rover is starting its uh, shutdown of its plant today uh, in a week-long stoppage, presumably uh, just to save money while it waits for things to settle. It's, it's blamed, partly blamed Brexit for this, but there are other factors such as the lack of demand for diesel cars. Uh, in the European Union with the new laws coming out about diesel cars and also a big slowdown in exports to China. China has stopped buying so many European cars. So all of this is adding up to basically bad news for British car manufacturing uh, at Jaguar Land Rover, one of the few what you might call British plants still left or British marks still left in the market. Now added to that there are other things going on as well this week. Uh, one of them, which I noticed yesterday, is the arrival, the unannounced arrival of Sinn Féin in London to have talks with the opposition parties, the Labour Party, the SNP as the third party, and, and others, including the Greens. And ostensibly this is about how to secure the peace uh, between Northern Ireland and the Republic after whatever kind of Brexit this turns out to be. This is the first time, as far as I know, that Sinn Féin have had a presence in London of any, of any significance for decades, having uh, originally decided never to take up their seats in the British Parliament on a point of principle that they didn't recognise uh, British, uh, the British presence in Northern Ireland as legitimate, and therefore they didn't see that there was any point in them taking part in the British uh, Parliament and sitting in that, uh, taking up their seats. So the presence of Sinn Féin is significant this week, uh, and it's it's showing that there is more than one or two parties involved in this. The opposition parties now are looking at the future. Scotland and Ireland are looking at the future together, uh, in many cases, with Sinn Féin um, looking for some way of guaranteeing that there won't be a return to the bad old days of a physical border post across the island of Ireland. And also the European Union making it very clear that after Brexit or during the Brexit process, no matter what form it takes, uh, the Republic of Ireland will have the full weight of European Union backing behind it at all times, uh, including whatever money is needed uh, to secure the peace between the North and the South. 
So things have come to a critical stage in terms of protecting Ireland from uh, damage to the peace process. Remember that the Good Friday Agreement is in fact an agreement between the European Union and the United Kingdom and it's an international treaty between the Republic, which is the European Union, and the North, which is uh, administered by the United Kingdom. So it's a big deal, really, when you think about it. So where does that leave Scotland at the moment? Well, it leaves us now with a huge hiatus, a great big space in which to take a breath and think about what to do next. As far as uh, the, the move towards repealing the Acts of Union and separating from England are concerned, this gives us, as I say, time to think about it a little bit uh, and to plan ahead for a campaign to hold what you might call a repeal the Union or, or, a, or a Scott ref of some kind. Now, we're still lacking a date for this. Uh, the, the First Minister had said that she would uh, outline, well, she, she would lay out her plans or whatever it was that she thought we should do next when there was clarity about the length of the Brexit delay, in other words, how long it was going to be. Now that I think by tomorrow we will probably know, and my own guess is that we might get a short extension in the meantime, but I think the longer extension is the most likely final outcome of everything, given the complete lack of any ability of British politics to actually come up with a consensus on what to do about leaving the European Union. So, Brexit is still going to happen. Where it's going to happen is a, a moot point at the moment, but it's likely to be at least a year in the future. And given the fact that it's a year in the future, it gives us time now to organise ourselves here in Scotland to plan ahead for the next uh, and hopefully the final and successful vote to separate ourselves from the Union, which, let's face it, has outlived its usefulness and it's no longer fit for purpose. In the news this week is also a, an article in Common Space which looks at uh, Derek Mackay's proposed new Scottish currency and it was originally proposed by Mr Mackay and the SNP that a Scottish currency would not apply from day one of separating from England. It, it would happen in stages when it was the right time. So we would begin by using the pound. However, the article published yesterday in uh, Common Space really refutes that. And an expert in, in economics has said that he thinks this is a terrible idea because you would start your new country off, well, not your new country, but your separated country, uh, with um, the Bank of England uh, setting your, your, your bank interest rates and controlling all of your economic policy. The value of your currency, for example, would be based on that. The amount that you could borrow would be constrained by the fact that you would have to always have a balance of trade surplus in order uh, to continue to use the pound. So we would actually be no further forward in terms of economic policy if we start with the pound. And the argument is that unless we start with the Scottish currency from day one uh, of our separate life from the, the United Kingdom, then we can't really control anything. Uh, we would be at the beck and call of the United Kingdom and the Bank of England until we chose to finally have our own currency. So there's an argument raging at the moment about when that currency should come into effect. Personally, my own belief is that I, I agree with the Common Space article. I think it needs to be from day one. Nothing else makes any sense. Um, Derek Mackay seemed to be basing his assumptions on the so-called Growth Commission report. And this is the, uh, the notoriously pessimistic worst-case scenario independence that you could have where you do everything as though you were the British government using the British pound and employing a Tory austerity to run Scotland, which is not the way we're going to do it. And at the end of the day, I think to assume, as, as Derek Mackay has done, that the Scottish Government would behave like a Tory government uh, and go cap in hand to the Bank of England looking for its currency would be a mistake. Anyway, that's my own opinion, and I dare say there are other shades of opinion out there as well. But basically, those are the facts uh, as I see them today. I think we're looking at a long delay, uh, and I think that's going to give uh, Nicola Sturgeon 
probably the ideal opportunity now to lay out her plans for a roadmap towards uh, a final, hopefully successful, um, public vote on separating ourselves from England and becoming a Scottish nation again on our own. And I think that's, that's really largely it. We have to stop talking about independence and have to start talking about repealing the Act of Union because we are independent already but we can't be independent if we continue to use the British pound after we separate because we will be constrained as we are now. We will not be able to do anything other than run Scotland exactly the way it is at the moment while we're using the pound. Now that may not be an ideal situation. We will not be able to invest in the infrastructure that we need. We will not be able to start the major uh, radical changes to, um, to the way Scotland behaves and to convert its uh, industrial policy from an oil burning fossil based economy to one which is entirely green and carbon free. So to do all of those things I think we need our own currency we need it from the start. Anyway that's about it from me today but I would expect tomorrow that we will probably hear that at the very least we'll easily be given a short extension. Um, the talks with the Labour Party that the Tories are having at the moment are fruitless uh, and I suspect that they will continue to be fruitless for quite a long time to come. Neither the Tories nor the Labour Party can afford to drop Brexit, can afford to stop it, uh, so they have to find a, a way to tiptoe through the minefield that they've created and try to find uh, a compromise which is not so bad that the British Parliament will not support it. Brexit is going to be bad, it's just a case of how bad it's going to be and when it's going to be. But it's certain now, Brexit is going to happen, they're not going to stop it, they're just going to delay it for as long as physically possible. The EU will eventually, I think, bend a little bit to help Theresa May, to help the British state, basically, to come to an agreement, because it, it, it is in the EU's interests to have Britain as an ally, not an enemy, and it's in Britain's interests to do the same thing with the European Union. Nobody really wants a hard Brexit. The threat of the hard Brexit is a bluff which neither the British nor the Europeans was prepared to call. So we're looking at Brexit happening in the distant future, probably next year. And in the meantime, I think it's high time that uh, the SNP got off the fence and announced this next vote. Uh, and announced it in the next couple of days because as soon as we know what this delay is I think we can start planning OK, there might be European elections to fight in the process but we need a date, we need a time set for this next vote It's time to put pressure on the British government It's time to fire the starting pistol for ourselves so that we have a target to aim for and if there's a year's delay, that is ample time and I think it's time we go on with it I'll see you later, bye for now